Hi there, Tracy with another scrapbooking process video. This one is using a combination of my stash and the Mimosa embellishment kit. And this is one of the two kits that was put out for the fall of 2015. And I'm just getting around to using it now. I had meant to uh, use it earlier this fall, but... Um, I just didn't. <laughs> I got really busy and so on. Uh, I did review this embellishment kit in the previous video on my channel. So if you'd like to see all of the contents of the kit, it, it includes all of the things that are piled over there on the left hand side of work, my workspace. Uh, I, I don't know. I, oh, you know what? I think I'm reprinting a photo. That's where I'm at right now. Sorry about that. Uh, anyhow, the Mimosa embellishment kit, it, there were two of them for the fall of 2015. One was all beautiful whites and browns and neutrals. And then the other one was this super colorful, fun kit. They had similar, I don't know if they had similar, but they had sort of a similar assortment of uh, embellishments. They're all handmade embellishments and they're absolutely beautiful. So make sure you take a look at my review uh, video right before this one if you're interested in seeing what all comes in the kit. I'm going to be using mostly the green and the blue, no, the green and yellow embellishments. There weren't any blue. <laughs> So this stack of paper that I have right here beside it is actually all of the pattern paper from the Ain't No Sunshine kit, which is the Scraptastic kit from the month of November 2015. And I, I'm just taking all of the neutrals out of that because I'm, th and also that yellow and pink uh, triangle pattern paper. And I'll also grab this pink one with yellow on the other side because I really like that. And those are both, um, and also that feather one in gray. Those are all exclusive papers to the Scraptastic Kit Club. I think that's all I'm going to take. And it appears that I forgot to speed up the first part of this video. So just hang on a second and it will speed up very quickly. There we go. That's more like it. And so I'm basically, like I said, I'm just grabbing the neutrals and anything that's yellow. And yeah, I'm grabbing way more paper than I need for this layout. This is going to be a very embellishment heavy layout with very little else on it. I have this picture of sushi that I'm actually reprinting um, because I printed it up on the test page that you print when you clean your print heads. And because of that, it wasn't a very good print. So I'm reprinting it, but I'm just waiting um, for my printer to print, I guess. And I'm going to keep track of my my uh, ingredients using my layout ingredient form, which is something that's available on my blog. If you follow the link in this video, it brings you to my blog. I don't usually do actual blog posts on my blog. It's more of a hub where I just uh, drop things. There's organization tabs across the top and uh, you can find anything that I talk about. I usually have a page on my blog about it. <clears throat> And you can see old blog posts there too if you're interested in seeing those. So here I have that triangle paper that I love so much and it's absolutely perfect for this layout. I want something that's going to bring out the green in the avocados of the sushi that I'm that I'm scrapbooking. And so the greens in this kit are just perfect for that. I'm also going to grab the yellow crepe paper and that's crepe paper, not crate paper, the scrapbooking company. Um, and you see me just kind of pulling out a bunch of different embellishments that I think are going to go well. I'm going to pop the bow off of the clip there and use it down here on that embellishment. And uh, just kind of having a look at how I might put together these embellishments. And I'm going to do a little cluster of three circular embellishments here. It's kind of a cluster of clusters because each of the circles is a cluster as well. And that little embellishment that has the uh, yellow bow tie on it right now is it says hashtag selfie on it. And I'm going to cover that with a word sticker. Um, so don't worry, you're not just going to see the FIE sticking off. I went to my stash and got the stick pin. And I also got a little tiny white glass flower. I don't know where that flower came from. I also don't know where the stick pin came from. It might be from Meyer Road. 
they make that sort of embellishment. So there's my cluster of three, and I'm just going to stick some of these leaves in. These are the, these are wood wood veneer leaves that came in the kit, in the embellishment kit. So, so far everything except the stick pin and the little glass flower are all from the embellishment kit, and then the papers are from my stash. They're from the Scraptastic November kit, I think I already mentioned. So there's the reprinted photo. I'm just grabbing a photo of how I have everything just in case I get it moved around and can't find how it goes anymore. I like it better with the white border around it. So there we go. That's what those are going to look like. The only thing that I'm missing is the word sticker that's going to go in behind that yellow bow tie. And I'm going to use this crocheted green doily like flower thing and the doily and I'm going to use them up in the top corner and the whole time I'm doing this I'm kind of thinking this is an awfully heavy large embellishment to be putting up in the top corner but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways and you know sometimes I just like to break my own rules and do things a little bit differently and this is a really different color scheme for me to use and uh, so I'm trying to just kind of get outside my comfort zone and do some different things with this layout so the background on that was quite uh, eh, I hope that you can't hear all that noise upstairs anyhow uh, the background was quite busy with those feathers I do like that feather paper but I think I need a neutral paper here uh, a cardstock and so I tried gray I actually couldn't find any white paper I don't seem to have any white cardstock in my stash at this point but I was able to find some from a kit that I haven't used up all those kept landing right on my all those punches kept landing right on my sleeve all lined up <laughs> which was kind of nice. I wanted to put like a bold black and white, but a small bold black and white touch every here and there. That's why I punched all those, uh, all those circles out, but I couldn't figure out how to use them. I'm still going to keep that idea in the back of my mind and I might punch a different shape or I might come back to it. Um, of course, I've already finished this layout, so I know that I don't, but in my mind, I'm thinking I might come back to it at this point. So these are Martha Stewart punches that I almost never use, but I'm glad I have them in my stash. Uh, I'm putting some leaves in here, which is going to make this a lot busier than I want it to be. So I, I don't I don't dislike the look of those extra leaves, but it's a little busy. So I end up taking them all off, except for one spot, which you'll see in a second. So here I go. I'm taking them off. I'm going to leave one on this because that little circle doesn't have as much going on as the other two beside it. That's that little green uh, epoxy sticker that came in the kit. It's not really a sticker. It's not sticky on the other side, but it's a little epoxy embellishment. So again, I just snapped another photo in case I... Uh, forget how things were. I'm going to go ahead and do some ink splatter on the back of this on the background paper and I'm doing it at this point because I know pretty much where everything is going to be and I just kind of want to get it over with and I, I had a feeling that and I'm using Heidi Swap Citron and oh, it's a beautiful beautiful bright lime green. It's so gorgeous. Uh, anyhow, it's just beautiful. I have a feeling that this layout is going to be very difficult to mask off after the fact to do my splatter, so that's why I'm doing it right now. I'm drying that completely before I add the yellow, because and that's Taxi Mr. Huey's, and I don't want the two colors to mix. That's why I'm drying them completely, and I'm going to dry Taxi completely as well. And now I'm going back and adding a little bit more green. It's just such a beautiful color. I wanted to make sure that you got to see lots of it behind the layout, behind the layers of the layout. So there we go. And now this is Silver Mr. Huey's. It comes out a very dark gray with a metallic shimmer to it. It's very similar to the Heidi Swap Color Shines. There we go. That's looking good. I'm going to add a bit more of that silver Mr. Huey's 
just because I know that what I'm putting up in that top right hand corner is going to be quite large and it is going to cover almost all of that splatter. So now my background paper is complete and I'm ready to put, and it got swished around there. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. So the whole time I'm thinking about what I'm going to do, you, you'll notice that I'm running something off the side of the page that's very difficult to cut. So if I cut that crocheted green piece along the edge where my paper ends, the whole thing will unravel, I'm sure. I'm not a crocheter, but I'm pretty sure that that will unravel if I cut it. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to do here to make that go off the edge of the page. And I'm thinking I'm probably just going to flip it, but... I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to use hot glue in order to do it. What I should have done is just taken out my hot glue gun right then and there because it would have been easier to put these other embellishments on the layout using hot glue because hot glue just just dries instantly. Whereas this Tombow Mono Multi adhesive that I'm using, uh, it's a liquid adhesive. It's very strong and I do enjoy using it. Um, but with these sorts of really bulky embellishments, it takes so long to dry um, that <clears throat> you really have to be patient and wait for things to dry before, uh, because something bulky like that can easily move around on your layout when the glue is not dry. It's not like something little that once you place it in place, even if the dry, even if the glue isn't hundred percent dry, it's not really going to move because it doesn't weigh very much. So there I just took a friendship word sticker from my word sticker stash. I have lots of word stickers. And I just put it over top of the word that was already there that said hashtag selfie. And I didn't really mind that some of that other tag is already showing because it just adds to the layered look of that embellishment. I find that these little leaves look an awful lot like antlers if you're not careful. So I don't want this to look like antlers or a deer head or anything like that because it's supposed to be sort of like a little flower even though it's really just a circle. Um, yeah, so I used a glue dot to put that little glass, white glass um, sparkly flower on top of the green epoxy embellishment that came in the kit. And now here again, I'm gonna use my Tombow Mono Multi. It holds fine. It's just, it did take a while for it to dry, but um, it's a little bit more forgiving because it's not completely dry yet. I get a chance to stick that leaf in place. <clears throat> and now I just kind of squeezed it all down so that the glue will ooze in around all the crevices of that and uh, dry in a way that's going to hold it in place. So at this point, I'm deciding I better actually stick this down. And I glued on the background paper because those embellishments are not dried in place yet and I didn't want to flip it over. So I just glued on this on the background page and then placed my layers on it and stuck it down with my hand. So I wanted to put that in place because that second green doily, I guess it's really the third green doily that I'm using on this layout. It, um, the medium size one, it, I guess it's the small one. Uh, anyhow, it, it goes off the edge of the page, like onto the background paper. So I needed that uh, paper to be glued down before I put that in place. And now I'm just putting some more of that Tombow Mono Multi right on that other leaf. And I left the leaves plain. I thought about misting them white and I thought about misting them a color. And I just decided that this layout has so much color going on and there's so much white in the background that it could use a bit of a rest, like your eyes could use a bit of a rest. And I wanted to have a little tiny bit of neutral. I'm afraid I'm gonna forget where I placed that doily. So I just kind of pulled it up and glued it down without really moving it. Trimming off the edge of the paper doily because that's easy enough to, to uh, cut. And this is how I want the doily to look. And here I go, placing it with Tombow Mono Multi. I'm being a little lazy here. I don't want to go over and get my glue gun. I should have just gotten my glue gun. It would have dried a lot better or faster or something if I had just... Um, used hot glue right from the beginning, but that's okay. I'll go get it in a second. Okay. 
So at this point, I've decided to do some outlining, even though these papers are already on my layout. So I have my Chamel gray pen because I don't want to do black outlining on this layout. It will have too harsh of an impact. And I want this to be a very light and airy layout without too much contrast. I want most of the boldness to come from the bold colors, not from black. I mean, if I had gone with those black and white circle punches and tried to use those as black accents, then I might have outlined this paper in black. But since I didn't, I'm going to go with the gray, which really reads as quite a warm gray. It's almost a taupe, but it's not. It's gray. So there's my hot glue gun. I'm just waiting for it to warm up. And that Tombow Mono Multi is just taking a long, long time to dry. So I'm going to use the hot glue instead, which I should have done from the beginning. These are Dear Lizzie Thickers. They are puffy. They are gold puffy letter stickers. And the font is called Desktop. And they're gorgeous. They came in the November Scraptastic Club kit that is called Ain't No Sunshine. And, um, but you can get them in any store, I think. I just had them left over. I had been scrapbooking with that kit earlier today, so I just pulled them out. Using my hot glue gun to stick that resin flower down, and it, the nice thing about it is that it really does dry so quickly. So I'm just um, pulling this as tight as I can so that it'll wrap around the corner very in a very clean, crisp kind of a way. I have a couple of page protectors that are slightly larger than 12 by 12 and I'm going to have to make sure that this layout goes in one of those because it's quite embellished and quite dimensional between those resin flowers and the crochet doilies and the clips and everything that's on this one. It's definitely going to need a little bit more space in the page protector. And if I can't get it to fit, I'll just trim down one of one or two of the uh, other edges, like either the left-hand edge or the right or the and the bottom edge. Just take a little sliver off of it with my cutter pillar trimmer. So here I'm looking for a font because my title is all set up in uh, on that wax paper in the Dear Lizzie desktop font, but I want more to this title. It's not just Sushi Nami, which is the name of the restaurant that we love. Uh, it's I want it to be called Sushi Nami with Steph and Dave. So I'm just looking at all of the different small letter stickers and I really want it to be a tile letter sticker because uh, it's going on top of that pattern paper and I don't want it to compete with the pattern for readability. So tile stickers are great for that. You can put them on pattern paper and still have them be very, very readable. So this authentic letter sticker is the one I'm going to go with. This is one of my very favorite letter stickers. I think I need to buy more of it. It's just perfect. It's a nice, warm, neutral. It's not quite gray, but it's not quite brown. It's a nice, warm, grayish, brownish, neutral. <laughs> so here I am layering all of these letter stickers so that they're all stuck to one another and the letters are nice and close together. That will help my title fit in the space that I have decided it will go. And now I'm just playing around with placement a little bit. Am I gonna stack them all up like that? That would look cool. Or am I gonna, yeah, that... I like the stacking, but then uh, I think I'm gonna go with this look. There we go. That's what I'm gonna do. So I need to place these letters and those S's always they always kind of throw me off a little bit. It's hard to get them properly placed. Like it's hard to tell which way, which way they go, like in terms of how to get them looking vertical enough. And now I thought I was going to kind of line these up so that they are, I thought they were going to end in the same place. I should know better. It was out on wax paper. I could have known just by looking at it, but, um, Anyhow, 
the word nami is just a smidgen bigger than the word sushi. And also because that doily is round, it's overlapping over the N in because the N is at the is at the broadest part of that circle of the of the doily. So I'm just going to shift the word sushi over just slightly. And that just looks a little bit better to me. It was fine the other way too, but, and now I'm going to shift it over a little bit less. <laughs> just right. There we go. It was a little bit too far to the right, a little bit too far to the left, and now it's just right. So now that I have placed those on the wax paper, they come off all in one go. And you can place them all in one go as if they're little word stickers instead of letter stickers. There we go. I'm going to move them a little bit. They're not quite right. There we go. Bring it down just a little tiny bit. Give it a bit more space. There. So I brought it to my sewing machine and I ran gold thread over the small letter stickers and now I'm doing my journaling on this. So I have two journalings that I want to do. One is kind of just like the general details of this night but then I have a little something else to say about this sort of just like my personal thoughts. Um, this was a night out that I really really needed and we had planned it a while before I knew that I was going to need it. It was sort of planned ahead. And then when the time came, I was just so happy that I had a night out without kids or responsibilities. And it was sort of just, it was slightly after my birthday. It wasn't really to celebrate my birthday, but it sort of was. Um, anyhow, it was a really enjoyable night, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about some personal things that were kind of leading up to going out and why this, why it was such a relief to go out. But that's not going to be in the public part. Like I'm not going to talk about that part on the video. Um, anyhow, this, what I just journaled is more of the public story. And ugh, I didn't like it. Those, the, that color of craft paper is just too heavy and it was introducing something too boxy and heavy and brown for this layout. So I thought, oh, I have this skinny pink washi tape. Maybe I'll journal on this, not on the paper above it, like not using it for lines, but actually, actually using it for journaling strips. So the idea here is that I'm going to put exactly what I had written on the brown paper strips. I'm going to write that onto these uh, these washi strips. And I just have to find a pen that's not going to smudge. I was hoping I could find a gray pen that was a slick surface pen, but I couldn't. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in black. It's not what I would like, but it's what I'm doing. One last ditched attempt to find a gray or silver marker that's going to work, but it's not. So here we go with the black. And I'm not going to get too far with this before I decide that I don't really like this pink. It's the wrong color of pink. It's sort of similar to the pink that's in that triangle paper. It's just a tiny bit darker, but I don't know. It's kind of bland, isn't it? It's like a dusty rose pink and it just doesn't have any oomph to it. It's blah. So instead of using that, I'm going to go over to my, and so I thought maybe I'll place it over here. Maybe it's like cutting into the design of the layout a little bit too much. Maybe I need to place it in a column down here because it was sort of running too far over to the left. And in, like I wanted that to be negative space there instead of being filled with journaling. So uh, this is okay. I'm still not done the journaling. I'm gonna put one more piece in. And then I thought, wait a minute, I have this really hot neon pink uh, washi tape from Amy Tangerine from her very, very first collection, I think it's from. And But I knew that if I introduce a really hot pink up there in the journaling, I'm going to need to have some hot pink in the rest of this layout. So before I even go to the trouble of doing that journaling on the hot pink washi tape, I'm going to just make sure that I can make this work in the regular part of the layout, like in the, in the regular layers. So I want to put a piece next to each of those circles that you see. So two of the three circles down in that 
bottom left hand corner and then I also want a little bit of it up here under that green bow. I'm going to cut them into little flag tails so that they look like basically little tape flags sticking out. And one of those is too long, I'm going to make it shorter, but just bear with me. And so that's looking kind of weird and plain, and it's kind of like a random piece of tape sitting there. So I put some enamel dots on it, and it looks a little bit more meaningful, or like it's there for a reason, other than just to put pink there. It's sort of just there to put pink there, to be honest. But Anyhow, I don't love that look, but it's okay. It's all right. So now I'm going to put my journaling strips here and I'm going to shorten it quite significantly, which I don't feel too bad about doing because I have that hidden journaling that I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is just stick it in the back, like put a hidden pocket in between, like in behind the layout and just stick a little tag there with the bigger story. So what this journaling says on the pink washi tape so far, the bigger strip says grown ups night out. And then now what I'm doing is I'm actually looking for the date. It was December 17th, 2015. And so that's all that that says. And I don't mind not telling the story, as I mentioned, because I plan to tell a little bit more of it in my hidden journaling. I'm looking for more enamel dots here. And yeah, I'm going to put another piece of tape up here in this corner just to, again, I want that pink to be spread around. And then I put some yellow enamel dots. These are from my mind's eye. I'm putting them every here and there in three different places. And now I'm showing you the close up because I think I'm done. And I actually went over and I took photos of it and I uploaded the video, like I took the video off the card and put it on my computer so I could start doing my process. And then I decided that that journaling, instead of being a hidden journaling tag, I'm going to put the journaling tag, because again, remember how I said at the beginning that that was a little strange for me to have such a giant embellishment up in the corner. It just wasn't quite sitting right with me to have that big giant hunk of green up there. So I thought if I placed my hidden journaling in such a way that this neutral tag that I've dressed up with a bit of green and it already had a yellow tag on it, like a yellow reinforcement, then I can put a little tiny bit more of the public story. So I'll read you what I'm writing right now. It says, after a difficult few weeks that included having Naomi put to sleep and fighting a stubborn cold, it was nice to relax and hang out with great friends. And that's really, <clears throat> pardon me, that's really all that I want to say publicly about this. And the rest of it, I'm going to put on the flip side of that tag. And so that's why I want the tag attached with that yellow binder clip so that I can take it off. And really only I will know that it's under there. No one else will. So they won't open it up or anything because I'm not going to say open up or turn this over or any. Usually when I have an interactive element, I indicate that. I want this card, I want this journaling tag to look like it belongs here. So I'm putting some more of that neon pink tape and I'm just going to use my tiny attacher to more for an embellishment than an attachment. And there we go. And I will add the private journaling later to the very, to the back side of that card. I like that. And I like that when I flip it over and when I open it, it's only me who's going to open it. When I take that card out and have a look at it, uh, the back side, the underneath is still decorated. So you still have that leaf that's that wood veneer leaf that's covered and a little bit of embellishment. Uh, I felt like it again, I wanted to incorporate it, just make it look a little bit more integrated into the layout. So I just cut another piece of that. Uh, triangle yellow and pink pattern paper and I made it so that it sticks out right there but it also sticks out of the green doily underneath so that when I take it apart it looks nice to me as well. So now here is the close-up part. 
you get to see this little cluster of embellishments. Now this is very, very different for me. It's, it's a different style of layout than what I normally do, but I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, it's not all that different. It's just brighter colors than what I usually use, but I'm no, I'm not really afraid of bright colors. There's what it looks like when I go to look at the back of it, which will have journaling on it eventually right there. I don't know who made that card. It could be a Dear Lizzie card. I suspect I got it in a Scraptastic kit at some point and never did use it. And I think that's because I don't have a whole package of them. I just had the one, so it must have come in a kit. So I just wanted to say thank you to Melanie at uh, Mimosa Embellishment. Uh, she provided the embellishments that I used on this, except for the stick pin and the enamel dots and the little tiny glass flower. So thanks so much, Melanie, for giving me a chance to work with the Mimosa embellishment kit. I had a really, really fun time. There's lots of leftovers that I can incorporate into future layouts. Uh, and I'll encourage you guys to check out the website, which I'll link in the information section below. Uh, and if you guys have any questions or comments about this layout, just feel free to leave me a comment below and have a really great scrappy week.